Looks like I feel in the dream, but uh, I, I just see Dream is incredible at drops in this matchup, and a lot of his career was actually like made off of this in Wings of Liberty. Like he was actually insanely good at drops in this matchup. Yeah. Um, SOS though, lots of mind games. Uh, very tricky. Uh, you're not going to be playing a straight up TVP against this guy. Like he might hallucinate some immortals and and attack and make it look like he's going to do a gateway attack while he's taking a third base. Um, the map is Sejong as well, which I feel like proxies do well on. So we could see some proxy mm. Stargate play, for example. Uh, this is going to be a cool matchup because Widowmine drops are like the build on this map right now, and I want to see how SOS handles that. You know, I, I'm sure Dream, um, after losing tomorrow, uh, he's definitely taking a page out of that guy's book. He's like, okay, let me learn a bit from this guy. What does he do? If he was watching that Maru versus Zest game, he's got to be like, okay, Widowmine drops all the way. Doesn't surprise me that he's coming out on this map. SOS is like, Pretty often does come out on this map actually for yep. the generic Greenwing. So could even be like a snipe. It could be Dream saying, okay, I'm going to play like a TVP up against SOS. That is the guy I want. Um, you know, he's got a smile on his face. Even though he hasn't come out that much in Pro League because uh, he was clearly focusing on the individual league, he's still 4 and 1. That's very impressive. 1 0 versus Protoss. And as you said, uh, you looked up his stats. He's had a lot of great success versus Protoss very recently. And. Uh, I like his chances, uh, but I have to give the SO, uh, the edge to his opponent SOS here. Just slightly, though. This is a really tough call for me. Yeah, it's, it's incredibly close. I mean, let me tell you, uh, I was on the knife's edge here, basically. It, yeah. was, it was like 52% to 48, basically. I told you earlier before we were casting, I was like, I, I was, when I was writing my prediction, I like wrote SOS and like deleted it and wrote yeah. Dream and like deleted <laughs> it and wrote SOS. I was like, oh, I just really don't know. Uh, five and seven. SOS has had a lot of failed experiments this round, that's for sure. Or, or uh, this this uh, year, I should say. Yeah, but at the same time, a lot of them were against Zerg on this map, to be specific. We saw a lot of weird two-base, like, Robo into Twilight, into Stargate Fleet Beacon carrier. Like, he was doing crazy stuff. And recently, as of recently, he, he did kind of hit that stride where all that experimentation did come into, you know, effect. But I'm just not sure where his PBT is at right now. I really, really want to see this game. That's what I know. <laughs> so do I. Sejong, one of the best maps in the pool. These two players are getting pumped and ready. Yeah, guys, let's jump into game number four here. It's going to be Dream versus SOS. Down here in the bottom right, in the orange for SK Telecom T1, he is Dream. And up to the top left in green, the Jenner Green Wings, it's SOS, dollar sign, no dollar sign. IEM's uh, world champion of last year, and a big 100K check, all or nothing. I love, I love that tournament, by the way. I, I don't feel like there could ever be a tournament quite like that again, but at that time. A one-time thing. So sick. Yeah. I love it. It's like I it's a very know. fresh idea. Just kind of like winter. It's not like a fresh idea. I'm, I mean, I'm sure this has existed for like thousands of years, but I mean, like it felt. We, we haven't really seen it here in esports for a while, so yeah. I'm just happy that kind of thing to go down. Um, it's the best for like the spectators. Of course, players aren't always as happy about that. Uh, yeah. that sort of tournament. Of course. I mean, just think about Hero. That guy must have been so sad. Ten gate, feeling Stargate. Yeah, would not be surprised. I mean, that's kind of the build. We even saw it yesterday yeah. um, in PvP, I believe, though, out of Hero. Yeah. Or maybe Son. Yeah, it was Hero. Yeah, Hero yeah. against Son on this map. Um, it's up to Dream, really, to go for the scout, though. You know, he, he's got to get over to that base. He's got to identify how many pylons are there. Looks like he is going to go for Reapers, another very strong build on this map. So as long as he's, you know, meticulous with the scouting, he goes in there, he doesn't see the right amount of pylons, maybe send out an SCV, try to identify where that Stargate is. I mean, we're not exactly sure if it's definitely going to be a Stargate, but it's looking that way. Let's wait and see how this build turns out. Yeah. Well, um, you know, I was kind of feeling like, I mean, Stargate was something I mentioned as a strat SOS might do from the beginning. And uh, then I was, like, starting to think maybe he's going to do a Phoenix build because we've seen Phoenixes used sometimes on this map to, to stop Widowmine drops and things like this. But um, so let's just wait and see exactly how this one turns out because... 
even though the things we've described are of the most likely, we do sometimes see players like go 10 gate into something else weird. So this Reaper, though, is, is the best possible opening against this. Just simply going to be able to scout everything. Yeah. Do you see one of the pylons there on the edge? Could just be, you know, starting in the low ground. The one thing about this is that he hasn't taken a second gas, and if he does go for Stargate, he's not really going to have anything else. So looks like it's not going to be Stargate. He's going to actually rush out a Mothership Core and a Zealot, possibly. Yeah. Well, actually, it's just going to be a fast Mothership Core. All right. Yeah, so it's like a it's like a really rushed Mothership Core, um, which is great for scouting. Yeah, yeah. Good for scouting. You shut down this SCV, like, for sure, for sure. Yeah, no worries about Reapers either if you want to keep it at home, but I, I really don't think he does. I think he's just going to use that Stalker to deter the Reaper. Next is going to come up here. And uh, this is a cool build, too. Yeah, just mixing it up. This is what I like to see out of SOS. You know, definitely a guy that doesn't play 100% standard all of the time. Here's that Reaper. Nice timing on that Stalker to pop out right away. Well, this is great because now he's like, okay, he already saw that the Mothership Core was rushed and that it's heading his way. But at the same time, he saw there was no second gas. So he's like, okay, no concerns about early rushes. He is going to have to respond to this, though. His CC timing is definitely going to be negatively affected. And with the rushed reactor after Reaper into this factory, uh, SOS is very well uh, yeah. aware that this is the build for the map, and he's going to punish it. He's actually going to be able to just fight these Marines straight up. Can't Mother repair those. Yeah, Mothership Core can go straight up against two Marines, and that's actually going to get an incredible amount of damage done. It has enough as well for a recall, so he can just come in here and be ultra annoying. He's even going to delay that supply depot. In fact, he can even come back again once he recharges his shields to kill the next two Marines. Uh, it's the third and fourth, I guess, that are going to make him so make it so he probably doesn't do that. But yeah. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, he's getting damage done. He's delaying the CC, the supply depot. He's getting into that build, but he also gets a full scout of the base. He knows everything that's going down. He's like, okay, I, I know it's Widow Mines. We're all good on the SOS front. DTs on that low ground you were talking about. I don't know about this. This is very strange to me. Um, Looks like he's going to rely on a forge for detection. Exactly. And that's, you know, that can work. Uh, but can he get his cannons up in time? He's coming actually by, by ground right now. Oh, and he killed the probe, which means that he can't get a forward warp endpoint point for those, uh, those DTs as easily. He's going to have to send a second one. Which actually may then in turn run into this army. <laughs> hmm. I don't know how well this is actually going to work out. Well, let's see what Dream does here. Let's see how safe he is exactly. Well, he saw the late gas. Uh, and I guess expected no Stargate play. So didn't make any turrets. None whatsoever right now. Just more so focused on the attack rather than the defense. Yeah, it looks like that first medevac going to pop out here. He's coming back for the Widow Mine. Yeah, he's got a lot of units in place for possible oracles. Yeah, this is a very defensive drop. We saw this yesterday. I forget who the turn was, but it's just one medevac, one Widow Mine. It's not committing to much at all, in fact. And uh, you keep the rest of your units at home. So he's just trying to be defensive while maybe getting a little bit of damage. Here's the first DT. Coming in here. Just dropped the mule straight up right now, right here. That's unreal timing. Light. He's going to come in here. Engineering bait just started. Yep, he sees it. These Marines don't have combat shields, mind you, so he can actually just start swiping them. Uh, but that's a great scan there. Looks like he has uh, other orbital had one, so that's great. Meanwhile, over here is that one Widow Mine drop. Close call, but not quite. Oh, thought it was mm -hmm. one Marine in there, but one kill, definitely not what you want. Yeah, already four SUVs gone down now. You know, he had one scan, but that's just one scan. Uh, another DT able to come in here, do even more damage, going up to seven SCVs, eight SCVs, nine. This is just too much damage already. This turret's not finishing, no way. Cancels immediately. Oh my god. And they kill the last SCV over here. No mining in the main base. Second as, uh, DT comes in here, it's going to stop that turret. And this is just already too much damage done. He's got enough for a scan soon, four seconds. But he may not even be able to kill this, and he can only kill one of the two. <laughs> He's not going to be able to get yeah. both. Some really great TT play out of SOS. Reactor going to be killed here. No add-ons for any of those buildings. DT That's even doing damage uh, as it goes down. SOS really just doesn't follow the rules, man. He just likes to do his own thing. Is I he even going to get this? Nope. 
Not without another scan, which I do not believe he has. Uh, amidst the little clapping there in the crowd. This turret's about to finish. Get another Marine or two without combat shields. Ooh, just barely in the vision range there. He's got a warp prism, though, so this isn't over yet. Yeah, this doesn't end yet. This but is just an unreal amount of damage. It's 54 workers to 28. That's nearly game ending. Plus, he's got a third base now coming up, but Colossus Tech is finished. Uh, Dream, he doesn't have any tools to get back into this game. None. Yeah, he, he finally has the tools to stop these harassments, but two DTs and a Warp Prism might even still get a little bit more done. Maybe he snipes a Tech Lab? I mean, Stim is starting right now at 1050. And this he might actually DTs snipe as it. well. He does have units in position, though. Gonna try to just go for two kills, and he's even gonna get out some really nice micro there. Valdez, imagine that with that uh, Legacy Warp Prism. How much oh, he man. could pick up. <laughs> At least we play Protoss, man. At that, least that's good. <laughs> uh, Although you may be switching to Terran. Yeah, I'm thinking about it for it sure. Legacy. Gotta wait until that new unit comes out, though. I don't think that's gonna be coming out at release. That's probably like a month down the pipeline, but. Uh, well, this is even more damage. Five kills on this one DT alone. He doesn't have a turret here, actually. Not at, in, in the mineral line. He has one at the front, but. Every scan he uses hurts even more because we're talking about a 30 worker deficit right now. He needs those mules to be even, which is just simply not going to happen. Look at the supplies right now. He's actually being doubled by SOS. And Jin Air just brought the A game today. I think SOS is back, man. This guy is just, you know, like we said, that experimentation. It's kind of like, it's it's like one of those really experimentational, like weird style Protoss like uh, Liquid Hero. Uh, especially against Zerg, but he's like bringing it into all matchups and he's just like shutting everything down and getting a lot of wins these days. He just, he doesn't play by the rules. And that's actually what's so scary about an opponent like this. How do you prepare for a player who has so many builds that he's already used and shown, and on top of that, just simply he uses builds you've never seen him use or, you know, very rarely see him use or any other Protoss use, for, the, for example. Who could oh. catch? <laughs> That pull, though. Literally right on time. Oh, poor Zelly. Um, the way you prepare for a guy like this is you just play safe. You scout. You don't sacrifice your Reaper for one probe going out on the map. You uh, you try to scout the base. You make 100% sure that he isn't going DTs. You make a blind turret, and you get an earlier plus one. That's how you deal with it. And unfortunately, Dream just kind of dropped the ball on this one. Yeah. Uh he just well, he, he saw the one gas, and I think that was it. Like, he saw the one gas, and he was like, ah, oh, no tech, it's fine. And then it came up, and it was like a kind of a rush to attack with very few yeah. units. The mothership poured a lot of damage, too. That's the problem with a game with a limited information, limited scouting. It's like you can make assumptions that can just lose you the game. And Versus Protoss, especially. Protoss is the race that yeah, will definitely <laughs> trick you. And get Protoss to dream. Get Protoss, man. Just how the race works uh, is going as far back as Stargraph 1. You you think it's like a you know, multiple gateway push and it's a reaper drop. Well, sorry, man. You lost the game. Ha scouting is so important. That War Prism is dead. Finally, he can rest uh, easy on that one. But he might be RIP resting <laughs> in a second, man. Yeah, look at this. I, I don't even know what he has in terms of units. He has two Marauders and 19 Marines. One Viking. He's going up against a 156 Protoss army four that has four Colossi. <laughs> this is about to end. This is going to be disgusting, guys. Please cover your eyes. If you have any children with you, cover their eyes as well. You don't want to see this. Yeah, well, even DTs continue to do damage at 15 minutes. You know something has gone wrong. No. Well, this is going to be it. Uh, parental adv advisory <laughs> recommended. Ugh. 70 supply lead. Guardian shield goes up. The upgrades are gnarly. Oh. That <laughs> force shield just for good measure. <laughs> GG. GG. SOS has done it. 3-1 victory for Jin Air. You know, Jin Air today came in with a brand new plane. They had Maru on it. They had, you know, a ton of uh, fans in the studio as well. You know, preparing, getting hyped for this as well. Uh, a huge amount of support for them. And it was just, it was just a very, very um, clearly 
Like, they're, they were in the right mindset. They prepared well. And despite SKT's sick lineup, I mean, let's, let's list these players off again. Innovation, Dark, Sue, and Dream. They just did yeah. great. They did great builds. They did great play. I feel like the uh, the matchups today definitely did favor Janair. And that's one thing I will say. Maybe not that Sue versus Symbol one, but I don't know. Maybe throw even Sue against Maru. Try to throw in a funky build. Maybe try to catch Maru being greedy or something in his EVT. Maybe would have worked out a bit better. And maybe, you know, grab a win for innovation there against Symbol or something like that. But the way the lineups looked today, it looked like it could have been close, but did favor Jenner a bit. And you see that reflected in the win. And that's a decent win. They needed, um, you know, some points there, some indicator points. They were at plus two. Now they're at plus four with a three to one victory today. Yep. And they will, uh, they will pass SKT in this very, very tense top four because because MVP and Prime are like so, 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 or uh, not MVP, um, Startail. Startail, Yoey, and Prime are so far down there. The remaining six teams become much more neck and neck, and everything is yeah. really close for them. I mean, you even mentioned MVP, but now they're like three and two. Yeah. So maybe, you know, they win a couple more games. It could be right up there. It's going to be a couple hard days for them, of course. I'm sure they've got some tough opponents ahead of them, but it's definitely possible. Anything is possible here at Pro League. Just like you mentioned, with two teams pretty much already out of it, makes things uh, that much closer.